Rev it up, Ben. Welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 2,376. Did you ever wonder why license plates on vehicles have not changed over all the years? Well, today you're going to learn that they are. Be prepared to be inspired. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah! Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah! Today I'm in beautiful Granite Bay, California, with a very special guest by the name of Neville Boston. Neville, welcome to Cars Yeah! Do you have it in gear, and are you ready to release the clutch? Oh, absolutely. I'm excited to be here. We're going to have some fun today. Now, before I introduce you, and I'm very excited to talk about this new revolutionary technology you've created. It's it's mind-blowing in a way. It seems commonsensical, but at the same time, like, what? And that's my teaser for you listeners. I'd like you to share one little thing that most people don't know about you, Neville. I am first generation here from Guyana, so the only English-speaking country in uh, South America. And the unique thing about my family, I think my father's siblings are all left-handed. Really? That, now, yes. <laughs> well, that's quite interesting. I'll tell you, when I was young, I started writing with my left hand. And back then, the teachers didn't like that. So they forced me to use my right. And so I'm right-handed. Now, I wish they'd let me do both. And then I could have been that ambidextrous. But I remember saying, Mark, you can't use that hand. Use this hand. And I was like, what? Kind, yeah. of, kind of weird. Yeah. Different times, right? I'm telling you. Cool. Well, welcome. How long have you been here in the United States? Well, see, I was born I was born here. I was born in uh, New York, in, in Brooklyn, New York. Okay. But I'm first generation here. First generation. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, my two older sisters were born in Guyana. I was the first one in the States. Wow. Fascinating. Very cool. Well, let me introduce you and we'll talk about this business you've created. Neville Boston is the founder of Reviver, pioneers of a digital license plate program i'll tell you (laughs) embracing cutting edge technology reviver has emerged as an example of modernizing a government in a public and private partnership they've surpassed the milestone of selling over 55,000 license plates in california alone the success of reviver in california serves as a testament to the company's commitment to revolutionizing the government landscape by harnessing the power of digital innovation. New states that have come into the platform include Arizona, Michigan, Georgia, Illinois, and Colorado. They all follow next. Reviver's mission is to modernize the driving experience. We're going to learn a lot more about Neville and Reviver, but first a word from our kind sponsors. They be Keep the, the gas in the tanks or the charge in the batteries. If you drive an electric vehicle, we'll be right back. Buckle up. For several years now, you've heard me talk about Linkage Magazine. I've been a subscriber since the start. Their talented and creative team brings you a spectacular publication and website that shares the automotive passion from a worldwide perspective. Linkage is about driving, restoring, collecting, and firsthand experience at collector car auctions and more. They bring you real-world values plus rational, experienced opinions on the current markets. They cover the automotive world and the people who share our passions. And Linkage Magazine has grown, mailing you six issues annually. Join me on this journey with Linkage. They're geared for the automotive life. You can subscribe at LinkageMag.com. Years ago, when it was time to renew my collector car insurance policy, my carrier's rates went up way up. But my usage was the same and I never made a claim. I didn't even have a ticket. So what's with that? So I turned to American Collectors Insurance. Has your collector car insurance recently raised your rates for no good reason? Tired of paying an annual membership fee? Then it's time to look around and call American Collectors Insurance. I shopped around. I asked friends for recommendations and found a winner that I can trust. And boy, I'm glad I did. I saved hundreds of dollars every year and slept better at night knowing my baby was properly insured. American Collectors Insurance have been protecting vehicles since 1976. They provided me with an agreed value insurance policy backed by their history of taking great care of their clients. What could be better than that? So give them a call and ask for a quote today. 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866-224-9324. And protect the ones you love like I did with American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. 
So Neville, we are back. Now, I received a notice from your company about what you're doing, and I had to read it like three times because I'm going, wait a minute, what are they doing here? I, I don't quite get it. I think I do. So please uh, walk us through how this all started, where the idea came from, and how you do what you do. Well, a good friend of mine uh, came up with this brilliant idea to develop a marketing company. She had been working for a, a large concern and had figured out in a unique way how to really build brand awareness through doing events, targeted events, and to develop unique ways of getting people connected to the brand in, or, in an organic way. So we uh, had our first customer and started that, I think, back in 2004, and the business was ripping. And we uh, took it from a small concern into a, a pretty large business. And coming up to 2009, we were about to double or triple in size just based on the clients that were going to be coming on board. And then 2009 hit. Yeah, something happened back then, if I remember right. Yeah, something may have happened, you know, the Great Recession. And it literally flattened everything that we were doing. So um, basically had to let everybody go, bring them back as, as contractors. And just, you know, be able to work on the contracted business that we've had. So I was in California uh, with a really good friend of mine who had been um, working in state government for about a decade. And he worked for John Burton, who was the president pro tem of the California Senate. And I was talking to him about I needed to have a business that regardless of what was going on with the economy, that there was still a need for this. So regardless of what was going on, you had to do this. So. Fortunate for me, unfortunate for him, he went to the DMV and had a horrible experience and was complaining about it profusely. Don't we all? Yeah. So we were looking at underutilized assets that the state owned. And all of a sudden, it was this aha moment. License plates have to be renewed every year. And it's the one thing on a vehicle that is really not controlled by the auto manufacturer and has not been updated. And we could actually solve a big problem by digitizing this process. That was the idea. So not having to go to the DMV, be able to register remotely and update your plate. So that was the thought process. And that's the hypothesis that we came up with. And then we had to prove out whether it was really viable. So uh, we were able to set up a meeting with a gentleman named Dennis Clear, who was the deputy director over legislation for the California DMV. And we set up the meeting in the December of 2008. And I can remember this like yesterday. That was me, a five minute meeting, ended up being an hour and a half because the DMV was about to want to go online and get people that didn't need to go into their offices out of their offices so that they were more efficient. So the timing was perfect. And I've got to tell you, Dennis, was just amazing. He literally walked in the Capitol with us to talk to legislators about the idea. So it was it was incredible what he did. Didn't have to do it, but did it because he believed in it. So put a pin in that. January of 2009, he helped us set up a meeting with his counterpart with the CHP, a, ga a guy named Avery Brown. And he basically did all the legislative work for the California Highway Patrol. And we needed to meet with them because any product that was going to be put on the road that had to do with compliance, they were going to have to sign off on. So we get into this room, 10 officers, you know, in their dress uniform, and you're explaining this idea. It's a deck. It's not a product yet. And I think what came out of that meeting is what really got me excited. And I really realized we had something. So he said, listen, normally what tech companies do is that they build something and ask for forgiveness later. The fact that you guys are coming to us early and asking for our input gives us ownership in what you're doing. So we have a test track in Sacramento that you guys can test your product once you get something built, and we will give you feedback on it. And we started a working relationship with them based on that, which is you know incredible. So then we had to go and do the hard work of actually passing legislation to be able to make this legal. And three years later, 
we were able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it always takes longer and more work than you think. Bureaucracy, baby, bureaucracy. <laughs> oh my God, it was so heavy. But you know, I learned so much because I would sit in meetings to find out who really controlled the various committees that we were going to have to come in front of. Because you need to know who the people were because their titles didn't really talk about their influence on their on their caucuses. So that's something that we had that I had to learn and, and get myself steeped in. So after we were able to pass the legislation, we had to work with the DMV to come up with a way to pilot the, the, the technology. So it took another year and a half to two years to go through the RFP and RFI the RFI and RFP process, which we did. And we basically had to write it because they didn't have a way of engaging with us. So it was it was just really interesting to see like how they weren't prepared to really engage with technology in a way outside of them coming to you with an idea. So we helped to develop that process, which was exciting. But after that point, we were actually able to put a product on the road and it worked. And, and, you know, and we were able, you know, through the legislation that we passed to get up to 200,000 people into the pilot. So, which was unique. California was extremely unique in the way that the legislation was set up. So we were able to build the business while we were getting things built out, tweaked, and kind of finalized. So it was, it was an amazing process. Well, I can't imagine, yeah, dealing with government bureaucracy makes most of us insane. And the DMV is the greatest example. It's the greatest situation that the common everyday folks have to deal with every year. I don't know anyone that enjoys it. It's just always a pain. And there's all these jokes that come up with going into the DMV. The people that are around you, the people that work for you, I think they've even created cartoons about the sloth that works at the desk. That was so funny. That was so funny. I mean, it, it was it was the perfect example of what some what people see. Right. Yeah, exactly. So walk me through how this actually works, because when I first heard of your idea, I went did you, you know, I went right to the license plate. I'm a visual guy. Digitize. You mean you mean there's like a little panel that changes? And yeah. Huh? Well, I've actually got one here, of course. And, and this this is the digital plate. Since we're audio, explain what you're holding up to me. I mean, to me, it looks like a normal, in this case, an Arizona license plate. Well, what, what's amazing about this is that this is e-paper. So e-ink makes a display. Like the Kindle. You know, you have Amazon in your backyard up there. The Kindle is e-paper. And this is e-paper. And we've ruggedized it. We've tested it so that it's automotive grade. And you're able, once this is locked in place, once this ink is locked in place, you don't need power for it to show up. So that's the difference. We had to make sure that whatever we built, that if for some reason this was an accident and the, gra the glass was cracked, that it wouldn't bleed. Normal, normal screens, TFT screens, that if any oxygen is introduced, it blacks out the actual screen. With this, it operates like a regular metal plate. And that was the reason why we needed to have this type of technology. So it's e-paper. It takes no power once the image is here. And it only takes power for it to change. So our batteries in, the, in this product, if it was just on the shelf, it's a 10-year battery. With the use case that we have, it's at least six to seven years before you would have to change it. And then, and then we have a wired product. So that's the R-plate. And this is, uh, this is the Pro, and, and basically, it's a wired plate. It has a front light, and it is, you know, it has GPS and accelerometer in it, and we mostly have this for fleets. Okay, so people can track where their trucks are going, where they've been, Absolutely. all of that. And, and then their compliance, they're able to do, you know, remotely, which is, which is amazing. You don't actually have to go and physically touch it. You can send a message from the cloud to the plate, update your plate, and your and your vehicles will be able to, to drive on the road. Because when it comes to fleets, uh, commercial fleets, their business is their vehicles. And if their vehicles aren't moving, they're losing money. So our job is to make it really easy for that to happen. 
Now, when I, I joked with you when we were having a, a great pre-show chat about, okay, how do we keep, uh, you know, it's always about the bad guys messing everything up uh, from turning into James Bond with the rotating license plate. Because somebody coming in from the cloud and going, I'm going to change my plates now so I can go rob the bank and then drive away and change the plates. It's all, I assume, encrypted or protected or all of that? Yeah, it's end-to-end encrypted. It's encrypted down to the actual There's no outward ports that you can plug something into to put information there. You would literally have to go down to the chip level to make any change. And, and the truth of the matter is there wouldn't be any benefit for you to do it. If you're breaking in because there's something valuable in there, then I would understand. But we keep the place as dumb as possible, and all the information is basically held in the cloud. And our systems you know, are run on AWS, so they're encrypted. And then we have LTE connections through Verizon and AT&T, so all those uh, ports are encrypted. So it's a very, very secure unit. So for the plate that typically a fleet would buy, can a regular consumer buy it so that their car becomes trackable in case somebody steals it? Yeah, so uh, a consumer can use it and a fleet can use it. And uh, it would give you the information about where your vehicle is. You can geofence a particular location of where you want to be, or you're able to do that as a fleet, track mileage, all the rest of that. Okay. Very, very streamlined. Yeah, very cool. Well, you know what? You know, thinking about all this really cool technology, you're leveraging advanced features and integrated connectivity. Can this become something that if somebody wants to go to a personalized plate, they can go online and say, I want to change my plate to Big Daddy <laughs> or whatever they want to call themselves? Well, yeah, so, so that's the thing. Our, I think, secret sauce is to really help streamline the compliance aspect of the plate. Our what we see in the future and like the conversation that we were having beforehand is that there are going to be metal plates, you know, forever. If you are making the hypothesis that there won't be metal plates and there will be digital, I think the first iteration of that is looking just like the regular number plate, but over time it could be something completely different, but there has to be a transition. So saying that to say this, what I believe the real secret sauce for the company is is being in the information flow, is, is making sure the data and the information is accurate, and so that when you're looking at the plate, you're looking at the most accurate embodiment of that compliance. And you want to be able to do services like we have a tolling feature that we've introduced, so you can do the tolling through your plate. Right. Uh, we're going to be working with some parking aggregators, so you can do parking through your plate. Awesome. We want to make it easy for you to do any kind of transaction that you would normally do with the DMV digitally and have real-time results. Because at the end of the day, you're always looking out for what's best for the consumer and what's easiest for the state to be able to track and get that information that's needed. Well, of course. And up here in the state of Washington, I've lived here for 29 years. And one of the things that I've been able to do is I, I don't have to go to the DMV anymore. I haven't for a long time. Uh, up here, I can do things online, but they still have to mail you the little sticker. Yes. And you got to pay extra for that if you, you know, have a mail, if you don't drive down to wait in line and get the sticker. And I, I've always thought, this is so silly. I mean, it's just like, that would be a better way of doing it. I mean, that 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 you're 100% right. I mean, when you think about how advanced vehicles are today and the things that you have with them, I think since 2017, every vehicle that's come out has uh, some kind of radio that's built into the vehicle, some kind of LTE connection. So, I mean, it's kind of a foregone conclusion that you're driving a computer, you know, even if it's not a Tesla. So my way of thinking about this is if you've got smart cars, you should have a smart plate because that, that plate enables you to know and have real-time compliance and be able to communicate information that's vital. Vehicle is stolen. You can actually put stolen on the plate. If there's an amber, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, wow. like, you, you wouldn't think about it. You know, because you're thinking about it from the vantage point of a stamp metal plate. Right. When it's digitized, there's so many really interesting things that can be done that opens up really unique opportunities, you know, kind of to move forward. And I think that's really the big change when you think about, you know, integration. Because COVID was a big deal from the, you know, point of view that the world basically came to a stop because of a virus. 
and DMVs and you know Department of Revenues and Secretaries of State, they could they they could not transact business. So they were giving everybody extensions. We could always transact business because we didn't need to wait for a sticker. We didn't have need somebody to actually stamp out a plate. We have a digital display that can be updated to be the license plate, and you don't need stickers, you know, that's digital as well. So when you start thinking about how the world is now and how you would like things to function, we've got a digital footprint. We should utilize it. Yeah, it's marvelous. It's really, really cool. I mean, that's again why I wanted to have you on the show because the whole idea is really a disruptive idea in a great way. And that is rethinking the way something has been done forever and ever and ever. And uh, yeah, very, very cool. Well, I want to talk a little bit more about you. And I want to start with perhaps a special vehicle story in your life. Is there a vehicle that's been special for you? Well, <laughs> because you're a car guy, like I, I had gotten and I'd been wanting my entire life. Like I've had a couple different Jeeps. But I wanted a Range Rover, and that was the vehicle for me. And I just, I loved the way that they looked. I loved the leather. I loved, you know, everything about the vehicle. And that was like the special vehicle for me um, as I, you know, became an adult. Mm -hmm. uh, one I had for many, many years. I still, I actually, it's funny. I sent it down to my mother and it's now like in her garage and we take it out every once in a while to drive it, but it's, it's now with her. But, um, that car was like, that was my favorite thing to take out and take around, uh, just because I loved everything about it, whether it was on road or off road, it, it just, it, it, it allowed me to do what I wanted. What year is that Rover? That Rover was a 2007. Okay. Yeah, cool. You know, it's an interesting brand. When you think back to the first ones that came to the States, and they really were poor cars. I mean, they just they were. were. I, I knew so many people that bought them because they became an instant instant celebrity status. And, and as a diehard car guy, I couldn't have quite figured it out. Because, like, but why? Look at this thing. I mean, it's just built so poorly. Uh, obviously, a lot has changed with the evolution of the brand. But... I really think it went back to the old Rovers and those iconic vehicles that were all over the world that were used to go into jungles. And I think that's what did it. And they leveraged that pretty well. Would you agree? I, I could not have said it better. It's absolutely the fact that it's the vehicle that you could drive on the street, but take off road. And it, and it gave you that, that sense of adventure when you were in the car. Uh, I agree. And the other thing that was interesting to me is, you know, this was when they came out, the SUV concept was really starting to take off. And, you know, when I was a kid, it was station wagons. Everybody had a station wagon. We had a Vista Cruiser, right. the Oldsmobile. Um, but now, you know, good luck finding a station wagon. There's so few of them. But those cars, uh, the joke used to be, well, where are you going to drive it? Over the speed bumps at the Nordstrom parking lot? I mean, come on. <laughs> But people, people like the, the romanticism of being able to do that. No, 100%. Yeah. Could not be, you know, more true about that. That's exactly, yeah. Yeah, very cool. Are you still driving a Rover today or are we, uh, have we converted to the electric vehicle? Yeah, so I had a, I had a good friend that was on my board uh, that used to run uh, Mercedes-Benz, uh, Ernst Lee. And Ernst, I was talking to Ernst about wanting, uh, uh, getting, needing a new car. Uh, and he was, and, you know, and we were going back and forth and he was like, you should get an E-Class. He was like, it's a driver's car. He was like, you know, you need to get either a P2 or P3, but they're fantastic cars. They'll, they'll basically, you know, kind of drive forever. And I was like, really? And so I went. I test drove them and I was blown away. Absolutely loved the car. It, you know, it had every bell and whistle in it. Everything he said was 100% correct. And I'm driving it today and absolutely love it. Yeah, they're wonderful. I remember they came out with the the E500 and the E-Wagons, the E-Class Wagons, and I wanted so badly to get one, but at the time was not in the budget uh, for where we were at in life, but uh, always admired those cars. My sister drives one. They're awesome. So I'm going to be a bit of a car psychologist. I like to play this game. I like to crawl into your head a little bit here. If okay. you were reincarnated, that is, if you were manifest 
as a vehicle, not what you want to be, though. This is how you perceive yourself in some kind of vehicle. Yeah, if I was a vehicle, I, I think it's, and it's so funny that I'm going back. The vehicle that I really like are the new Defenders, the uh, the, the uh, Land Rover Defenders. Uh, I, I just think that those vehicles, they just, the way that they look, uh, the color palette that they have, I mean, they're just so beefy, meaty, just like own the road. And anytime that you see it, you know, you can't take your eyes off of it. Yeah. Well, those things go back to me to the old Land Rover concept, that look and feel. And, the, you know, a lot of those have become collectible, but the new ones, yeah, every time I see those, they draw my eye too. But I see why you answered that way. So there you go. Kind of a touch of the old, touch of the new, right? There you go. <laughs> cool. Is there a great book that you'd like to share with our listeners? That's really an interesting thing. Uh, it, being in college, I read so much all the time. And when I when I think about what recreational reading I do, I do more, to completely, be completely honest, magazines and articles. But a book that I read recently, The Trillion Dollar Coach, that book I thought was fantastic. And it's basically talking about all the different leaders and the coach who helped them become great at what they were doing. Yeah, that's by Bill Campbell, right? Bill Campbell, absolutely. Yeah, yeah great book. Nice choice. You know, I don't think anyone's recommended that, which is pretty amazing because I've got a place on my website called Guest Recommended Books where there's over 3,000 books listed there that my inspiring automotive enthusiasts have shared. But I don't believe Trillion Dollar Coach is on there. So thanks for bringing a new one to the plate here. So before I let you go, I'm a bit of an enabler, which means this. I'm going to provide you with any vehicle in the world. You can take it for a drive anywhere in the world. And you could take anybody with you, including somebody from the past who's no longer with us, which opens up a world of opportunities as co-pilots. So if I uh, paid the bill, I should say, for the ultimate drive for you, Neville, what would it be? Oh, wow. Any car. Any, any car. car. Acid Martin. Ooh, okay, nice. The Acid Martin, and this is a funny thing. The person that I would really want to talk to would be Bill Campbell. Oh, okay, nice. This is the thing. He worked with all of the great CEOs, leaders, uh, I think, in the, probably in the last half century that have just created incredible companies. And I would love to get his take on what he thought about them and what they were doing. Yeah, it's something for me that just, I would just be beyond excited to be a part of that. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Well, the Aston Martin would do it in style with a little bit of quietness. Uh, if you just uh, didn't hit the exhaust button that opens up the exhaust and makes that car kind of loud, at least in some of the models. So yeah, maybe leave that untouched until uh, you get out on, the, on the, the highway. Nicely done. Well, you've taken us on a wonderful journey and I, I'm so excited you got to come on the board on the Cars yeah show here and talk about this incredible technology and what you're doing. It kind of seems like, why didn't anybody think of this before? But sometimes the most obvious takes a little bit of time and what you went through to make it happen. Not too many people would have that kind of patience. So my hat's off to you and your team. Would you share maybe a, a parting word of wisdom advice or a success quote of some kind? Yeah. I mean, the, the thing for me, and I think this is how I've lived my life, my entire life, is that if you truly believe in something, never give up. I think that a lot of times when things get hard, people start thinking about other ways of circumventing what needs to be done. And the things that really matter always take more effort and take longer than expected. And you're willing to put in the time and put in the energy because the completion of the task is that is the most important thing. And and for me, when I took the first dollar of investment around this business, I knew that I was in for a long haul because I had made a commitment and that commitment meant everything to me and means everything to me. Awesome. Great way to put it. And it goes back to that old uh, Winston Churchill quote, never, ever 
ever give up. <laughs> so uh, basically, it's true. And look where you are today. Very cool. I want to do a thank you to your team that put us together today. Sinon and Kelsey for putting us together. Thank you, too, uh, for bringing Neville to Cars. Yeah. What's the best way for people to learn more about Reviver? Go to www.reviver.com. And Reviver is spelled R-E-V-I-V-E-R. So it's the same way forward as it is backwards. <laughs> Very cool. So Reviver is a palindrome. Yes, it is absolutely a palindrome. And it's it, it, and for that reason, it's easy to remember. That's very cool. Awesome. Uh, as a sidebar, thanks to my wife for uh, hollering from the other room. So Neville and I couldn't quite remember that word. So we got the smart one on the team here. That's a, a good deal. Neville, thanks for being so generous today with your time and your expertise and for doing what you're doing. Absolutely spectacular. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. All right, my friend. Have a good day. Thank you. Here at Cars Yeah, it's all about inspiration. And our charity of choice is Tech Force Foundation, where it's all about making a positive difference in young people's lives. Tech Force helps young adults discover their talents and passions for all things automotive, with a mission of helping students develop a career as a professional technician. Tech Force awards nearly $2 million in scholarships every year for students to pursue technical education, and they support hands-on activities, events, and mentorships across the country, working to change the outdated perceptions of these careers. Auto techs are in high demand, but the supply of qualified technicians is critically short. They need your help to fuel their mission. Learn more and join me in supporting them at techforce.org. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.